Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, P.O. Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703 0363 0703 Email address lsmedia at livingseed.org or visit our website at www.livingseed.org Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings forth the word of life. I just want to say two things to you before we move on into the word of God this morning. And those two things I'd like to say to you, I want you to keep it somewhere in your mind. You will need it many, many years to come. You will need it. You will need it even when we are no more here. You will remember that the Lord particularly began to speak to you in this way. The first thing I want to say to you is that divine moments divine moments in any man's life many many times they are momentous but it is those moments if it is properly handled very well that sets their lives in motion and, and, and keep them and keeps them moving What many people don't recognize is that there is always one moment when something is supposed to happen. And if you miss the moment, sometimes it does not come back on its orbit except by the mercy of God and that may be after many years many many people look for events they look for programs and activities but God just seeks moments when he can engage a life and set him on. And when such divine moments come, if a man is sensitive to God and sensitive to the Holy Spirit, you suspend everything to maximize that moment because you are not likely to have it back. There are many things you can always do but there are some things that you will not always have opportunity for let me give you an illustration the lord jesus few days to passover he went to the house of mary and martha martha and mary rather you remember the mary and martha of bethany do you remember and their brother Lazarus you should remember that <clears throat> and Jesus was there they made him supper Martha as usual did what she usually do she was serving she's so addicted to serving that even Jesus warned her one day and said look Martha Martha you are cumbered and distracted about much serving but one thing is needful mary has chosen it 
nobody will take it from her that didn't help Martha because Martha was full of matters and she's used to things she's used to going up and down she's always thinking oh there let's do that let's do that let's do that do you know that you can always make phone calls but you may not always be in a moment that transforms your life and yet at the moment when God is about to do something somebody calls you off by the time you are coming back that moment has passed can't meet it again so at the moment that Jesus was in that house Mary had been sitting at his feet all along he's been listening to his word but at that moment Mary felt this is the time to do something and she quickly went and brought her alabaster box broke it poured it on Jesus do you know that brother said why this waste do you remember why are you wasting this why can't we sell this and give it to the poor Jesus said something that I thought I should let you have a knowledge about this morning as I'm getting to the word of God he said to them the poor you have with you how always and you can always give them but me you don't have always as if Jesus was saying to them there are certain things you can always do there are many things you can always do many good things that you can always do you will always do them you will always find them around you like the poor the poor will always be there there will be no time there will be no poor somewhere to help they will be there there will always be certain things to do but there are some things that only comes your way once in a lifetime and if you miss it it might take years to get around to it if at all it happens so I sensed that we are about one of such moments from yesterday as we sat and we were all uh, watching the drama and the spirit of God is doing different things in different lives the brothers that were doing the drama they, if they told you they would have told you that the drama didn't finish there were still some certain scenes that was to come but we knew that the moment had arrived we stopped everything and said this is the moment you miss the moment you become a monument so I want to beg you today and you know I beg you there are many times I beg but I beg you not for something else I don't beg you for money I don't beg you for anything else but I beg you for this one matter and I found that several times the Bible will say I beseech you I beseech you so I want to beg you this today that you should be very very careful for the moment in which we are I want you to be careful not to be distracted not to get your priority misplaced we pray that you will not be among those that were selected and you choose on your own to be a fool 
Don't do that. It's not good. It is not as if if you do that and you decided to go and become a monument, it will not be as if you have robbed me as a person. You have not. You have only done something to yourself and it will not be good. We went for a meeting some years ago. It was like a casual meeting. Oh my God. It was a casual meeting. It was a village evangelism meeting we went. And we have been doing the meeting. And I didn't know that that particular meeting was going to turn my own life and everything about me will be turned around. But you know, we started the meeting. The Holy Spirit seemed to be present. We were singing, worshipping. Nobody could stop anything. I remember that in that meeting, we were in a village and in the bush. We were all going to sleep either in the primary school or something. Some of us are going to sleep under the open trees. But that, as soon as the meeting started at about 5 p.m. when we got to the village, I found that nobody could stop. We couldn't sleep. The meeting was like a continuum. By 10 a.m. the following day, we have not been able to stop. I remember 5 a.m. I wanted to dismiss the meeting. I said, now let's stand up and share the grace. I was already sharing grace when somebody just spoke and said, why are you dismissing my people? Did I tell you I, I, I'm tired? I couldn't even know whether that is spirit or not. The people already went into the spirit. They were praying. Nobody could stop again until 10 a.m. And as the meeting went on, the following day now, this is now 4 p.m., we couldn't stop. I said, oh my God. And I felt that since I'm the one who is directing the meeting, that it's my responsibility to control it. So the third day now was running. And the meeting has not stopped. And I'm looking at my time and say, we must get out of this place by 12 midnight, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, because we have exams the following day. <laughs> so I deliberately went, sent brothers to go and arrange a gunguru vehicle that will carry us back to the campus. We have paid. The gunguru man has arrived. A group of people were in a small classroom they were praying I don't know what happened at the moment when the spirit of God just rushed back into the camp can I tell you what happened we could not move from that place till 2 a.m. now but as the Holy Spirit came it took, I don't know what was happening. It, it, there was a, a terrible conviction that came on my own heart. I saw something and the Lord began to deal with me. I wept. From about 4 p.m. that the, this thing just came, 1 a.m., nobody could do anything. People were weeping on their own. The whole camp changed. So you know, yesterday night, I felt as if, ah, God, are you about to do the kind of thing? Do you really, really want to do something with these young people that will set them on course for many years like you did to me some years ago? And so, you know, 
I felt that we must be careful that we don't miss the moment. We have been very relaxed now and saying, God, take, take, take over what you want to do. And as we have been praying, you see, much prayers have been going on since morning. It's a moment now. And what I want you to do is to be praying, Lord, whatever this must do to me. I don't just want to say I went for student congress. I want to be able to know that something that is setting me on course for life is coming on my life. And I don't want to miss it. You will need this as you go. Divine moments, when it come, you must know how to maximize it. Otherwise, you just become a mere monument. There are people that are now... I remember what happened. A friend of mine, we were doing that meeting together. I think when it was about 2 o'clock in the afternoon, he decided on his own to go. He thought that getting back, the rest of us were moving immediately. He left before the divine visitation came. When we returned around 2 a.m., Something changed. He was not sure. All of us were different. Those who have been looking for the anointing of the Holy Spirit, suddenly something broke loose on all our lives. And look at this colleague of mine that we planned a meeting together. He missed it. I can tell you that even when I see him today, after many, many years, I still see that he missed it. One day we were preaching somewhere. And I finished preaching. He was also supposed to preach. He has been preaching. And I preached. And the effect that came on the meeting was so much that nobody could do anything again. The Holy Spirit just took over and all the people were just everywhere crying to God. Then he asked me, my friend now, a colleague preacher, he asked me, he said, Billy, when did this thing happen to you? We have been together. You see, I'm still struggling. I preach, preach, preach. I've been preaching. I use all the things I know. Nobody moved. And I just listened to what you are saying. Look, nobody could stop them again. They have been crying since morning. You know what happened? He was one of those preachers that they don't come for a meeting unless he is to preach. So, I'm supposed to preach 8 to 10 and he was to preach at 10 to something. So, we were sleeping in the same house. When I was leaving for the meeting at 8. I said, can we go? So, no, no, I join you, I join you. So he made sure he arrived when it was five minutes to his time of preaching. He came five to ten. Only to meet, he couldn't meet a congregation. He only met people that were crying to God everywhere, screaming, praying. He stood. He said, what happened? The people told him, I said, look, the Lord came. Since the Lord came, we couldn't do anything. We have been with God. He said, so when am I going to pray? He said, when God finished dealing with us, you can come and preach. I wonder a preacher who wants to preach when God has finished working. Unfortunately, that day, the Lord did not finish working until 4 p.m.
Even by the time they went and called him and said, Now, the people said, We don't want that. We, we are tired. We don't want that. So he engaged me in the night. He said, Billy, tell me, when did this happen to you? How can I get it? I just wanted to remind him. I said, Do you remember? that meeting we went in the village he said yes 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 was that what happened when i left i said that's when it began sir. be careful the lord will help you if to say i know how to regulate it if to say i know when it should it will happen i would have said Relax when it is two minutes to time, I will announce so that all of you can get ready. <laughs> but it doesn't happen like that. The Lord will help us. Now, when we responded in the last two days, and several of you have made great responses, several of you did not mind your dresses, several of you were rolling on the ground. A floor that was not uh, plastered. What mattered to you is, Lord, I must not miss it. I must not be a loser. When I noticed the way God was working in our hearts, when I noticed the desperation with which several of us are seeking to walk with God, when I noticed also the intensity of our desire to be victorious, something else came to my heart. I began to also plead with God that you don't bring people to the place of birth and shut their womb. So it is with that that we want to do some deliberate study this morning. Our program is slightly changed, but it's okay. We are not, we know what we are looking for, all of us that have been serving God together. We don't struggle to do anything. We just want God to help us this morning. I want to reckon and I want to reckon it very clearly that when we said yesterday was April 30th and that it was the end of a month and that this day is the breaking forth of a new day of a new month we were not just being sentimental it looked as if it is a coincidence but I, I sense that sometime God uses what you would think was ordinary coincidence to strike a matter. That was why yesterday we asked you to write something where you will never forget. How many of you wrote anything in your Bible yesterday? Let me see. Let me see your hand up. Did you write? Did you inscribe something in your Bible yesterday? Praise the Lord. We did that deliberately because yesterday we stand out as a point of reference in your life for many years. Honestly, you are going to have children. If Jesus tarries, you are going to have children. And you will tell your children what God did. You will tell them. If Jesus tarries and when he has taken you to all the heights that he's planning for your life and people will ask you daddy or mommy how did it happen? This thing that God did to you will stand out clear. You will point at it because it will mark a great reference point in your journey with God.
in the name of Jesus Christ. So if something passed away and something new is coming in, we want to understand what it is. Let's start by reading the last passage we read two nights ago. I want you to turn to 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15. Yes. 1 Corinthians 15. I want you to be careful to look at it. It was the last scripture we refer to on Thursday night. But as we came again to the end of last night, that scripture is still coming out. And this is what it says. Verse 46. Verse 46. How be it that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is what? Natural. And afterward, that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. Are you there? Are you able to see verse 46 and 47? Eh? How be it? How be it? The spiritual did not come first, but the natural, and after that, the spiritual. The spiritual did not come first. Was that how NIV put it? Is anybody carrying NIV? What did he say? The spiritual did not come first, but the natural. And after that, the spiritual. Good news. Good news says, it is not the spiritual that comes first, but the physical, then the spiritual. That looks like a very strange passage, but it's very, very important in what God is doing. Let me first quickly note that for every man, for every man, the spiritual does not come first. What comes first? The natural, the fear seeker. What it means is that for every man, for every one of us, what comes to us first is the wrong thing. What comes to us first is the wrong life. What comes to us first is the natural, the flesh. There is no time for us to study as to ask questions. Why? It would have been a good time to study all of that, but the, 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 the point God wants us to deal with this morning is not about that. We are going to only start from there and go. Do you know that in the family of Adam, which one came first? Eh? Cain. Cain came first. A 
And when you go to read in the book of First John, and the Bible is talking about Cain, he said he's of the wicked one. But he came first, afterward Abel. And what did you notice about Cain? Cain will not tolerate Abel. The natural does not allow the spiritual to do what? To survive. I want you to be listening because that is where sometimes you know you want to grow, you want to be spiritual, you want to be, you want to win, you want to run to win. But there is one that is there whose purpose, whose desire is to strangulate and bring to death that which is spiritual. So, even though you have come, you have cried to God, you want to grow, you want to move with God, you want to serve God with all your life. And please listen, are you listening to me? And your offering is acceptable. As you came out yesterday night, I want to tell you honestly that God has stretched forth his hands and he has looked at you favorably. I want you to know that any one of you that came out yesterday with sincerity of heart something was buried yesterday God decided by his mercy to forgive you and forgive you completely yesterday night I want you to know that as you stretch out to him he also reached out to you He also said yes a bruised reed I will not break and a smoking flask I will not quench so in terms of whether God is happy to forgive you or to accept your offering accept your tears I want to assure you God is ready to do it but dear standard one who as soon as he noticed that so this Abel is being accepted he took a decision in his heart what was his decision I will kill it I will quench it some of you have not understood that several times something like this had come in your life and you have been very very eager to go on with God only to discover that something that has been there before stood up to do what? to quench it to strangulate it are you listening to me don't worry I'm taking a bit of time to lay the foundation because once we get to where we are going it's alright we just pray together and God will send you forth here victorious and 
this will not be for one week it will not be for two months it will not be for two years it's going to be for in the name of Jesus that which is natural comes first so it has an advantage advantage of age advantage of strength advantage of expertise and its purpose was not to allow that which is spiritual to do what to break forth so he said i will kill it king rose and slaughtered Abel. Are we together? In the family of Abraham, who came first? Eh? Ishmael. Was Ishmael the spiritual? Eh? Ishmael was of the natural Ishmael was of the flesh it's only when you get into Galatians chapter 3 and chapter 4 that the Holy Spirit began to say that which is born of the born woman the son of the born woman now as soon as isaac the one that god had intended from the very very beginning you remember that everything god said to abraham was about isaac am i right but the natural that was not meant to be came first and as soon as they were Isaac was born everybody was rejoicing everybody was saying ah so Sarah could deliver this must be God at work There was one that was not happy. Who was that one? Ishmael. The Bible said, while others were rejoicing, Ishmael was what? Was scornful. He was making jests of Isaac. And occasionally, when he had chance, he would call Isaac aside and did what? So you think you are going anywhere? I will finish. I will kill you. If you read, let's read so that you can know that I'm reading from the Bible now. Galatians. Read Galatians. Galatians chapter 4 verse 28 Now we brethren as Isaac was are the children of promise but as then he that was born after the flesh what did he do? persecuted him that was born after the spirit even so it is now nevertheless what said the scripture what said the scripture cast out the 
bond woman and her son. For the son of the bond woman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. You know, sometimes when you are reading the book of Galatians, this book is a very great book. If opportunity comes one time to do a, a thorough Bible study on it, it would have been wonderful. Brother Paul was dealing with the conflict. The conflict that has always choked the spiritual. And what we cannot dismiss you from here. I have been praying. I have been begging God. Lord, don't let these young men and women zealous, very eager. Because I know if you don't love God, you won't even come to Boko in the first place. Am I right? If you don't want something that will help your life, you won't put yourself into this kind of trouble. I know you love God. I know that there are several of you that you have repented with all your heart. But you find yourself always falling back. And I said to God, Lord, don't allow us to dismiss this meeting this year with the great things that has happened, but with Ishmael standing around. If Ishmael stands around, what is going to happen? I'm not hearing you. It will quench it. So what is the solution to that matter? Eh? Cast out the bond woman and her son. Cast them out. They will not be heir. And I pray that you will understand them. They will not be a sharer. They will not stay in the same house. God himself knows that the natural and the spiritual, they cannot stay in the same house. There will be a problem. And if you make the mistake, the one that we take upper hand is which one? The natural. Let's move away from that because I'm just helping you to see something. When he came to the family of Isaac, who came first? Esau. sold his own bad rights. He was a wayward man. You know Esau and Jacob were born the same day. So if Esau was 20 years, how old was Jacob? So when Esau was 40 years, how old was Jacob? So let me ask you. Esau married already, married two wives. From the daughters of the land. Why Jacob was still waiting? Are you, are you with me? So you know that this man that I'm talking about, natural, is reckless. He sold his birthright. But as soon as he noticed that Jacob 
has now been given the blessing and that Jacob had been told the way to live and not to marry among these people what did Esau what did he decide eh? he said I will kill my brother let me tell you as I'm talking now up to today whenever you meet the Edomites those are the descendants of Esau they came from the same womb it is one womb that delivered them are you hearing me oh lord you are not hearing me are you hearing me but the same womb produced the natural So wherever Israel is, the Edomites, they are always planning to do what? To kill them. If they cannot kill them, they will go and connive with the enemies of Israel to fight. The natural never supports the spiritual. Are you with me? You are not with me? You are. I'm happy that you are with me. So, the natural is always the senior and is always persecuting, strangulating that which is spiritual. Do you understand to that point? Do you understand to that point? But I will tell you one more before I come back. When you come to the family of Jacob, you will remember that the decision they took to kill Joseph were from those weak people. Eh? His senior brothers, the natural. And again and again and again, they are always from the same womb. Cain and Abel came from the same womb. Esau and Jacob came from the same womb. Ishmael and Isaac came from the same place. What is the meaning of that? What is the meaning of that? The implication is that for every one of us, every one of you, The first thing that your, your life produces is natural. But you see why the natural comes quickly and takes over. God has always been looking forward to when the spiritual will come. Hallelujah. God is longing for when the spiritual will come. Actually, when you were born by your mother, are you hearing me? In the mind of God, the one that your mother gave birth to, the natural, in his mind, God was saying, I only allow the natural to come out pending the time when the spiritual will be born. So, I perceive that the spiritual is here. I perceive that the one from heaven 
has been born. But to preserve it, for it to grow, for it to become what God intends it to be, we cannot leave it while the natural is standing. You will not go from Boko with the natural standing in your life. This natural see how the Holy Spirit describes it as you go further in that Galatians. Hallelujah. You know, in, in, in Galatians chapter 4, verse 29, he said, But as then he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit, even so it is now. Nevertheless, nevertheless, what said the scripture? Cast out the bondwoman and her son. For the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. Hallelujah. <laughs> Something is happening today. What is happening today that the Holy Spirit is laboring to cause your eyes to see is that because that which is spiritual you know we started by saying the seed that wins but for it to break forth we cannot leave the natural standing and God has decided to do something about it Do you know that God even when the people of Israel when they said they wanted a king eh? do you know that what God wanted for them to have was a man after his own heart which is spiritual eh? but which one did they get first the natural And as soon as the natural came to power and he began to misbehave because he will do so. The language that God used over Saul was the same language God used when he said, it repented me that I created man. Do you understand? So actually what Saul came to do was to simply remind God that it is that same natural man the flesh and when God decided that okay I have found a man after my own heart I have anointed him with my spirit and they brought David out as soon as Saul recognized that this David is the one that God actually is planning to grow what became his decision to do what to kill him. the spiritual and the natural they cannot be co -air. if they are heirs together we do what? We strangulate, we choke, we destroy that which is spiritual. Since God wants you to be winners, 
God has taken a further step to deal with the natural. God has taken a further step to uproot that which is natural, that which is the flesh. And it is this that will form the ground and the basis of your growth, of your winning, of your victory everywhere you go by the grace of God. Amen. Amen. Now listen. So in chapter 5 of Galatians, chapter 5 of Galatians, the whole of the passage was dealing with that same struggle. But when you come to chapter 5, verse 16, and verse 17, and I would like someone to help me read 16 and 17, if you can, with a loud voice, from any version you have. You see that? They are in conflict with each other. That's why you cannot do what is right for you to do. Where is good news? What I say is this. Let the spirit direct your life. Uh -huh. What our human nature wants is opposed to what the spirit wants. Yes. Uh -huh. These two, they are friends. What are they? They are enemies. That means you cannot do. Look, some of you are here. Some of you already know that fornication is not good for you. You know it. You know sometimes we finish a meeting like this you have cried you say god i don't want to do it again i don't want to do it again but on sunday sunday as you get back you find yourself in the hand of that same boy even when he is misbehaving with you you may even be crying. You may even be saying, hmm. but I said I don't want this thing again, but you know, God. Hmm. And I want to be a serious Christian. Huh? Okay, maybe after this time, after this, after this, uh, after this, we will not do it again. No, after this, the, the young man said, ah, well, it's all right. It's all right. Even if you don't want anything after this again, it's okay. On the decision you made here, the natural is still standing. You see, the natural does not say, Don't go and repent. It doesn't say that. It says, Go and repent. Collect whatever you can collect. When you bring it, I will do what? I will squeeze it. He doesn't say, don't. you know, there are times that he will say, don't go, don't go to Boko, don't go to that place, don't go and listen. There are some that he prevailed over there, they could not even listen to the word of God. 
But there are yet others who say, go. When you come back, we will continue. These two are enemies. But born from the same womb. And the mistake that many people think is the will of God is that until you die, Mr. Flesh will be living on one side of your life and the Spirit will be living on another side and you will be divided inside. And it depends on which one gains upper hand. Let me tell you, if it's like that, I know what will gain upper hand. Which one will gain upper hand? Is the flesh, the natural. It is natural for him to misbehave. It is natural for him. You know it's natural for you to be angry? Eh? It's very natural for you to be selfish. It's very natural for you to defend yourself. It is natural for you to think of yourself first before anybody else. It's natural. Pleasure is natural to the natural man. So if what God wanted is I let the two of them be in the same place, we know that this struggle will be for life. But my problem is that you don't struggle like that and still win. It is the natural that will take over. So what did God decide to do? What he decided to do in the family of Abraham was very good. God had already said, circumcise yourself. The funny thing I saw was that God was saying, look, I don't have anything to do with Ishmael. Ishmael is not my will for you. Ishmael is not correct. You circumcise yourself. But you know, when Abraham was going to do it, what did he do? He circumcised not only himself, but Ishmael. As if to say, let him. Let him be part of the covenant. As soon as Isaac, the son of the covenant, actually was born, the son of the bondwoman developed his wide nature and was ready to kill. But the answer was clear. What was the answer? Cast out! For the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir. So take note now. Are you, are you following that now? So what is God saying? The natural shall not share with that which is spiritual. So I want you to know that you are not going to go from here as a man of dual nature. You are going to experience because you have cried, you have prayed, brethren are counseling you, and it's good. But something that makes all the counseling, all the instruction they give you to be strangulated is the natural that is standing. We'll call on God together. See that God has ordained to do with your life is good here in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the So let's now look at that Galatians 5. We've just read verse 17. It's not, I don't intend for us to 
spend all our time there because it is something we are pursuing. So now, let's go on from that verse 18. But if you be led of the Spirit, you are not under the law. Abi? Now, the works of the flesh are what? Are manifest. Let someone read it for us. Your life will produce this evil result. You are reading from Living Bible, Abi? All right. Impure thoughts. Now, listen. Some of you have been struggling with impure thoughts. Abi? Eh? It's, it's one problem of the youth. But it's not just the problem of the youth. It is the outworking of somebody. Who is that somebody? That's Mr. Flesh. The natural man. The human nature. So listen to me. You have been fighting in pure thought for many years. You don't know that the producer of impure thoughts as long as he is standing what is he going to do what is he going to do he will produce again even though we tell you okay fill your mind with good things don't imagine evil things again be reading good Christian literature. Be watching good films. You know, as good as those instructions are, and they are good instructions, and they will still be given to you later on. Did it work? Eh? Why didn't it work? Why didn't it work? Do you know? Let me let me show you an example. Do you know that if you carry a Christian novel that is fifty pages, fifty pages, a Christian book, fifty pages, and somebody gave you one of these fictitious erotic books, like a James Adley James, uh, Mr. Bloom, or Mr. Boom, 700 pages. Which one do you finish first? Eh? Why? <laughs> Let me tell you why. You see, The man inside, Mr. Flesh. Whenever you open a Christian book, 50 pages, he is so reluctant. In fact, as you are reading it, you will be sleeping. When you read one page, something will tell you, drop it. Sometimes it may be a deception. You will say, re, you will read this book when you have time to study it. It's a lie. But if you see one of those books in the hand of somebody, even in a taxi, that one is just reading his own book, what do you think you will do? So when the man is about to turn the page, you say, excuse me, please, I've not finished. Said, so you mean you're also reading? He said, ah, yes, yes, I like that book. Can I, can I see it? So you will discover that quietly you and the man, you are struggling to read the book. Do you know 
that when you pick that book sometime at 8 p.m you don't know when 2 a.m has come you have not because as you are finishing one page it will look as if if you don't read the page something will be wrong ah huh? aha you are addicted because the man inside the natural that is his book that is his book even there are times we told you to go and burn it burn all those books burn all those you burnt it when you were zealous but when you cool down that man Are you hearing me? He said, but why did you burn my books? Anyway, since you want to be a Christian, it's all right, it's all right. You will not, you will not, you will not have it again. But do you know sometimes, you find yourself going to bookshop. Eh? And something inside of you, gravitating towards where? The shelf where they have that book. And then you pick one out. You are afraid now to buy it and bring it home because Christians will read, we see it. But now you are not afraid to stand in the bookshop. You do your leg like this. You know, sometimes you feel like falling down, and then you then you do like this. And they wonder why you have stayed one hour in the bookshop. You don't know that you are stealing to read. The same thing with films. You will see that with the remotes in your hand. You will press the remote. As if you want to watch news. When Christians or the who, who thinks you are doing well is around, you flip to either news or something. Once there are no more there, something you say, let me quickly check. Then you quickly rush. Who then gets in front of that film? Who? The flesh inside. He said, That's what I want. He said, Just watch this just for 10 minutes. 10 minutes, because how many hours? Even though you have come out here, you have cried. And God has sincerely desired to forgive you. But God himself knows that as long as the natural is standing, he will strangulate it. Should we release you again to the hand of the natural that will strangulate it? No. 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 Every spiritual thing that you are trying to grow why the natural stands has no future that's no future that is why we could have given more rules and regulations uh, when you go to campus uh, be careful this don't do this don't do that don't do this don't do that they will be good but they will be ineffective That's why those of you that honestly desire that this meeting must mark the end of rising, falling, rising, falling for you. And you are trusting God that I am setting my feet on the path of winners. And I'm trusting that I will live at that realm for the rest of my life. This is why this morning meeting 
is a little crucial what god must do to that natural is what we are looking for now is that okay is that okay they issue out from the natural sometime i'm telling you the truth that your own you 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 have said no i don't want to i don't want to think like that again ah if a girl just passes 